Hey guys, what's going on? It's Good Luck Steph. I'm here with another great podcast. This one's going to be action packed and we got a lot of great things for you. I got Wes and Natalie Isley here of Isley Magic and they have a story to tell. So, welcome to the show, by the way. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so, we're going to dive deep into a little bit about their history and you got some magic tricks for us. I got a whole table full of stuff over here ready to rock and roll, man. Perfect. Okay. So, one of my first questions for it, for you guys are, you guys have had an incredible journey um, in the world of magic and entertainment. Can you share some of the moments or experiences that made you realize that this was the path that you wanted to take? Uh, this was the path I wanted to take since, boy, I was I was in high school. Let me. Should I start back and just start yeah, fresh? Yeah, take us back. My dad owned a video store when I was a little boy. People don't know what video stores are nowadays. Uh, used to go to a movie library and check out a movie for 24 hours. My dad had one of those, and I loved horror movies and special effects, makeup. And I was studying art in high school, and I was all set to go to Art Institute of Pennsylvania. And my senior year, Terminator 2 came out, and I felt like my dreams were crushed. In my mind, I could see the writing on the wall. You're planning for the future, right? There isn't going to be C- there isn't going to be hands-on movie magic anymore. It's all going to be CGI. So that job's going to be gone. Yeah, they still offer the class at you know uh, Art Institute back in the 90s, but I didn't think that was the right thing. So um, I went to college for marketing, and I said I'm going to be a magician. I love magic since I was a little kid. I did magic. Everybody knew me in high school as the magic kid. You know, everybody wanted to see something new every time they saw me. I came up with a new trick every single day for class. So uh, I went to school for marketing so I could promote myself. So I knew pretty early on this is what I wanted to do and there was no turning back. Perfect. And then how did you guys meet? I was in college and I was waitressing at a restaurant that he was doing magic at. And um, he started showing me magic tricks and asked me out to dinner and the rest is history. That's awesome. I never ever thought I would be a magician's wife. That never entered my mind, but it has been a fun ride. (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. And um, did, did you uh, believe him that he was going to be a successful magician, or are you thinking he was just playing around with you? Or No, by the time I met him, he was already pretty successful. So I met him in 2005, so he had been going at it for about nine years by that point, full-time. So Yeah, yeah. almost a decade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And looking back, how successful was that? <laughs> Hey, you were supporting yourself. You were doing good. Yeah, that's true. That's true. gotten better from there. That's true. So that brings me to my next question. Actually, you know what? Let's do a trick real quick, and then we'll go into my next question to follow up with that. Well, I have a whole table full of stuff over here. I'm just going to try something here. I'm going to show this to the camera. Uh, I'll show it to you first. It says Wes Isley. This is my logo, W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. But if I turn it over like this, it says Magic Man, <laughs> M-A-G-I-C-M-A-N, Magic Man, Wes Isley. That's my logo. And over here, three blank cards. Three blanks on my logo. Blank card goes here. Logo goes in the middle. Mix it once, twice, three times. Give it a shake. And they switch. Huh. Did you see it go? No, I didn't see good, it. Good, good. I'm working on it. What, what do I call that card? Do you remember? The Magic Man. My logo. Oh. Three blank cards <laughs> and my logo. All right, I'll help you. I'll help you. Watch, watch. Blank card goes there. Logo goes in the middle. You didn't know what to look for last time. I'll do it again. I'll do it slower. One, two, three. Give it a shake. I did it again. It jumped right over there. Remember what I got, though. Remember what I got. Ready? My logo and one, two, three blank cards. Put your finger on top of that blank. Check it, though. Make sure it's blank. I'm not going to move. All right. Can I show the audience that's Please, blank? please, please. All right. Totally blank. It's definitely blank. Keep your finger on top of it. Put it on the table. All Keep right. your finger on top. The logo goes in between the other two blanks. I mix it once, twice, three times. I'm only going to touch your wrist. Where do you think it went? Probably right in my finger. Check it out. All right. Sorry, dude. You could have <laughs> that, one, that one or that one. You picked the wrong one. That's these, funny. Yeah, you could have picked any one of these. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. So is this one something that you created or is this something that you learned along the way? This is a, uh, a trick that's usually done with aces, and I just put my logo on it to make it my own, to my own spin See, on it. Innovative. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So for, following up from that last question, from starting out with a magic kit to now performing over 400 shows a year, your journey is truly remarkable. What are some of the key factors that have helped you transition from a hobbyist magician to a full-time performer? 
I'll go to you, honey. <laughs> well, I came in and you were a full-time performer, but it takes grit. It takes stick to itiveness, if you want to say that. It's not really a word, but no, I think it is. if you want it, you got to keep working at it. Because especially in the beginning, even when I was there, we were in feast and famine for a long time. And if you just give up during the famine periods, you're never going to get to the feast period. And eventually it all equals out. If you keep at it and you keep getting better and better and um, work on it, then eventually you're going to get to where you're not at feast and famine anymore. Yeah, and I definitely have to agree with that. And that's the whole point of this podcast is, you know, we talk about the journey, we talk about the hustle, we talk about the entrepreneurial spirit. And that's really, I think, what keeps you going. And um, grit is actually what the Washington Post said that, you know, is the number one trait that people have that are successful out of like resources or money or, you know, like your dad knows somebody. It's truly grit and being able to do the same thing with different results, you know, and still have the same energy and the same momentum for that. And um, it's definitely hard. Um, when me and Lacey first started, we had a, we were in Feast and Phantom, um, you know, with our company where, you know, we've been doing this for 14 years. And um, there's a lot of times where, you know, you think about, you know, quitting or leaving, but then you're like, but then where does that go for legacy? You know, where, do, where does that go? And then you start to think and you're like, well, I can never go back to the real world, you know, like, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, go back and just get some job I hate. Like Jim Carrey said, you know, you can fail at a lot of things, so you might as well fail at something that you love. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. And that I think Forbes magazine, Forbes magazine said 70% of the people either are just mundane, just uh, it's a job, whatever, or they hate their job. I mean, we don't have that. Every day I wake up, it's a different adventure. It's a... Every job I go to is an adventure. 400 shows a year, people are like, that's a job. You're clocking. You're doing the same show. You're doing a variety of shows, but it's still you on stage. Does it get boring? Every day is different. Every day is an adventure. You never know what you're getting. I can't imagine people working a real job clocking into the same place every day. That would drive me crazy. I have no idea how they do that. Yeah, I mean, I give it to somebody that loves their job. They've been working there for 30 years, but, you know, there's people that can do that, and then there's people that can't. And I'm definitely like you guys. I, I definitely can't do that. And then to follow up with what you had said, you know, a lot of this, you know, too, is you have to have, like, an internal flame that keeps you going because if you don't, it's so easy to quit. And there's so many reasons to quit. You know, you got your family, you got your people. Like, my dad's always like, you know, your sister has a stable job. She works for the government, you know, and your job, you know, can be there, there. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you know, my sister's nine months pregnant and she just got fired from that stable job. Mm -hmm. I'm my own boss. So unless I fire myself tonight, I plan on going to work tomorrow. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the freedom, you know, is that you have that ability to have that control. And that's. What I feel like a lot of people lack, lack is that one, that time and control. I think that's one of the biggest illusions out there in general is that you have uh, a stable job. You have a safe place. What did you say it was? It was a, what did your dad say? Your sister had a stable job? Yeah, like a stable job or like a guaranteed job. You I, know. So I had a magician come to me and said, how do you make it work? I want to be a full-time magician, but I'm afraid my parents want me to get a, a, a UVA degree and he was going to UVA college and I have to get a degree and I have to get a job and they won't let me do magic full time. And I, and Joan Rivers had just died. And the guy that was her doctor was like the top doctor in New York City the day before Joan Rivers came in. That guy had job security. Joan Rivers came in, he's fired. It's just, it's there is no such thing as job security. How many nurses lost their job because they wouldn't get the jab during pandemic? Yeah. How many, I mean, it's just, there is no thing. And you could You could be a nurse and you get a new boss that just doesn't like you and makes your job miserable, so you quit. There's yeah, job and you security. Have, you have is states crazy. like Virginia, which they don't need a reason to fire you. They could just decide to, and they don't have to give you a reason. You know what I mean? And that's that's the sucky part. You know what I mean? Like you're right. If somebody doesn't like you, guess what? They just take your job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or give it to someone else. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, fooling Penn and Teller on their show, Fool Us. A remarkable achievement. Could you talk about the trick that you performed and the emotions you felt when you successfully fooled them? Because you were also asked after the trick um, to like kind of like prove it. Um, you know what I mean? Because they were kind of calling you out in a way. Well, kinda, kinda. So 
you're talking about live on the air. He was like, yeah, he's like, yeah, is that a yeah. gaff coin? Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, and that's the show. They try to guess how the trick is done. Uh, they love the trick so much. I'm getting to the end here, but they love the trick so much. They actually bought the rights from me and they perform my trick in their show every single night Fantastic. in Las Vegas. Congratulations. And they mention my name on stage right before they perform it. So I can't say that's a dream come true. That's cooler than anything I could have imagined going there. Right. But, um, Back in 2019, I was doing a restaurant. My wife would homeschool our daughter in the restaurant while I was doing tables. And um, I came back and had dinner with my family after after my gig at the restaurant. And I got an email that said Penn & Teller asking, and they sent it directly to me. And I'm like, what do I have? And I had that one trick that I'm trying to fool these guys, right? So I don't know what they know. Yeah, exactly. But I have this one trick in my show that I've been working on for years. I'll send them a video of that. And I had video of us performing in a theater show. And it was just great. It was from the back of the room. You could see everybody raising their hand and playing along. It was great footage. Even though it wasn't up close on me, it was great for what they needed. I sent the video while we had dinner. By the time I got home, which was a 45-minute drive, the producers were saying, yeah, we love it. Now, how'd you do it? I'm like, wait, I I thought I was supposed to fool you. What do you mean, how did I do it? If I tell you how I did it, then I've already lost. They're like, no, the production company needs to know how you do it so that you don't say, no, uh, I did it the other way. Because some tricks have multiple endings, multiple outs. Yeah. So they have to know exactly how you do the trick. So as soon as I found that out, I was like, Bleh. I told them everything. <laughs> they talked to Natalie, got everything booked. We were in Vegas before we knew it. It was pretty awesome. That's cool. Yeah, the whole thing was amazing. I remember being overwhelmed with joy. I just couldn't believe I'd fooled them. I had this trophy in my hand, and it was amazing. And I have to go to the hotel room, and I'm on top of the world, and I can't tell anybody. And my wife and daughter are still watching the show because there's other performers after me. So they're still in the theater for another hour after me. So I'm just sitting in the hotel room. I can't tell anybody. It was, it was awesome, but it was the weirdest feeling I've ever had in my life. I can't call anybody. In the hotel room, I'm in Vegas. They bought the room for me. No. The, so the the thing is, I was afraid the phone was bugged. I was afraid to tell anybody. Yeah, I didn't. Right? I can't call anybody. I can't tell anybody I won. Like they're treating you so nice, just so you might say something in your hotel room. But it's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar per occurrence that they can find you if you tell anybody you won because it's a game show, mm. and they can just pull your thing from the oh, internet. Yeah, they they can, don't win. I don't win. They can just pull it like I didn't win. Just take everything back. I might have this trophy that's really what thirty dollars what does it really cost him who knows i might have the trophy but i have no proof that i won it and it was taken back so i didn't tell anybody so it was filmed on march 4th and it didn't air till july 2nd nice that was a long time to keep the secret so i said the pandemic was because of me because i would have told everybody in the restaurants that i was doing gigs and shh, guess what you like yeah, the I mean, show who fool us tell them, you know especially with you know six such success and you know everybody liking what you do and now they want to you know kind of like usher you around and treat you nice i mean that's pretty cool well that's one of the things you hear all the time you guys are great you ought to be on america's got talent you guys are great you should do that show fool us and so it's like <laughs> i can't tell Why you say I that can't, yeah yeah i can't tell you that's awesome so what's the next trick we got for us So you said you can zoom in here. So what if I just perform for the camera? You You'll can be able perform to perform for the camera. Absolutely. Right here, right here. Yeah. All right. So um, this is not a trick, really. This is an illusion. One, two, three, four, five, one dollar bills. Do me a favor. Just touch one. They, they're not here. So yeah, take it out. Look oh. at it. Examine it. People think I use tricky props. They're not here. They're going to think it's... We didn't set this up ahead of time. Nope. It has that's, fabric on it. The little hair. So it's that's a real, a real one. It's a real one. Yep. Here. This is uh this is an illusion though. Watch. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, one hundred bucks. But if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right, right? There's uh plastic strips in there. You can see the ghostly image of the president on every single one. Strip on that side, ghostly image of the president. And you can check them out, man. Let's take a look. Now, um, the real question is, how do we do this uh, right before we go to the ATM where you can deposit cash? Well, see, that's the thing, right? Cops (laughs) consider this counterfeit, right? And uh, there's cameras everywhere nowadays, (laughs) so I have to turn it back, right? And that looks like this. (laughs) One, two, three, four, five, one dollar bills. That is fantastic. Yeah, man. 
So uh, you had mentioned quickly, um, what is the difference between a magic trick and an illusion? Well, in our line of work, an illusion is a big box trick where I put my wife in a box, make her vanish, she appears in the back of the audience, I make her float. So if you pay extra for an illusion, you're getting the big show, right? Um, some people, like the Christian side of magic, the Christian entertainers, right, the Fellowship of Christian Magician magicians, they don't like the word magic. So everything they do is an illusion, right? So they're just, in my opinion, they're muddy in the waters of, hey, no, you're messing up everybody else's definition of the word. Uh, some people call, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a small illusion. I, I don't call these illusions. These are just sleight of hand, small little packet tricks, pocket tricks, but just magic. It's just magic. It gets, uh, you really get in the weeds when you start trying to put definitions on everything because it's, it's all just magic. And that's what's cool. Everything fits on the umbrella of just magic. You have a TV show called West I you're, Isley. Isley, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Magic Life that's airing across the United States. How did the idea for that show come about, and what can viewers expect to see? So, uh, 2014, I got a job working on the Carbon Arrow Effect. I was a magic consultant and an animal trainer, and I came back and I was just on top of the world. I just worked on this television show, and I told my publicist. I want my television show. I want my own show. How crazy is that to ask? It just sounds, I don't know, vain. I don't know. But I was like, what can I do? What, what do I need to do? And I said, I didn't want to copy him, but I wanted to have like a reality show. We love reality TV. And everybody, the main thing they say is, how do you do it? How do you do 400 shows a year and do podcasts and do this and do that and raise a family on the road? So uh, we started vlogging. And she said to film something so that it, when you're pitching to a network, they have something they can see. Instead of just reading an, a, a script off a page, they can see something. So we started vlogging back in 2015, 2014. Somewhere around there. And um, after I fooled Penn & Teller, she was sending out press releases everywhere, and they were like, hey, and this vlog, can that be a TV show? I'm like, yeah. So they bought the television show from the vlog. So we re-edited the vlog and turned it into a TV show. So it follows my family around doing 400 shows a year. I started out the show kind of like um, I, I love the Seinfeld show where he always starts out on the nightclub telling the, telling the jokes with the microphone. And then um, it goes into whatever they're getting into. So mine starts with maybe a close-up trick on the streets with someone or me doing a trick on stage. And then we have the cold opening, and then it gets into whatever we're getting into. We could be at a county fair. We could be at a theater show. We could be at a resort. We could be at a private party, company party. We could just be having a family day. It's a reality show, so it just follows us around doing 400 shows a year. And you get to see the ins and outs. So you get to see everybody just sees, like, the show, and they're like, okay, that's what they do. Why is that so hard? But you're not seeing. So in the show, you get to see all the things that we run into as far as traveling and as far as setting up shows and figuring out where to set up all the different things so it's a lot of fun and flat tires and yes. now we have a family of six that we're taking around we have identical two-year-old twins we have a live-in babysitter i have 11 year old daughter myself and my wife bunny rabbits and birds and an rv pulling a trailer it's a lot going on so that only sounds like it um speaking of which um, you have involved your family and the babysitter in some of your magic acts as well, right? The babysitter hasn't done magic yet. She's, she's in the show, but she's not in the magic. Okay. She doesn't. She doesn't like to be in front, so she doesn't like to be on stage. Um, you'll just see her bringing the boys up for a final bow, and she'll just let them run on stage, and then she'll take them back. Um, so she's not in the magic show, but she's in the reality show because okay, she's cool. part of the family. So yeah. Yeah, it follows us around. So she's there. She's with the boys or she's, yeah, she's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. It's an it's a, it's a outside character in our show, it seems like. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. our show is our family. She is family, but it's another, I can make fun of her because she's not us. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's I, we love her, but she's, she's got some issues. She's yeah, funny. That's funny. <laughs> that makes it funny. Yeah. So, um, Moving forward, um, do we have another magic trick? We have tons. We have tons. So one of the things I told hold on, hold on, you. Hold on one second. Your microphone, for some reason. Let me just say that real quick. Do you think we can do this and we just lean over and talk? Yeah, if you want to do that, that's easier. I think that would work. Because I'm getting some weird feedback on that. It's just if you just touch this, it echoes. Oh. Yeah. It's something to do with the, um, the 
the frequency. If and you just do that from all the in. Yeah. yeah. That's how I figure out where I put it. You put it right in the middle, look. Yeah. Oh, you're afraid of being her way? No, no, no. I gotta figure out where I put it. There it is. Oh. And I was like, I didn't see it for a second. Hello, check. Oh, that's that's hot. That's good. Uh, uh -huh. That's not bad at all. Hello, check, check, check. Hey, you can hear me too. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. We can lean up and talk if we have to. Yeah. And don't worry. He'll let me know if you can't hear me. Right, honey? Lean forward a little <laughs> bit more. Are you serious? Seriously. I. No, just... You're going to push me on my stool. I want you to lean forward just to hear how loud it gets. Hello. I can't hear how loud it gets, honey. I want to hear how loud it gets. Oh, so just test hello, it. test, test, test. Hello, test, test, test. Hello, check, check, check. Hello, check, check, check. I think it's fine. You okay. just lean, just lean forward when you're talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, we're good. Cool. He's <laughs> like, these people are crazy. <laughs> so I am not an audio guy. I'm not an audio engineer. We have all this stuff, and I really have a hard time setting her mic up. She yeah. has this mousy voice. Testing. And it's hard to get her levels, so it, it bothers me. It bothers me. Um, which, uh, what kind of audio device are you guys using? What do we have, Natalie? Oh, you'd have to pull up a picture. Some, some Amazon remember. thing. Some, some I can recommend some, some good devices like that and um, some other stuff that's really easy to use. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Yeah. No, recommend. Uh -huh. Please, please. I love these. These are great. Yeah, these are actually cheap, believe it or not. I got these. You can get these as a kit on B and H Photo. They come with the stand and the microphone and the headset for like these, like 150 bucks. They're cheap, but you know it, it works. No, they're great. These are way better than ours. Um, yes, please I'll give me all that stuff. Give me everything you need to give me. Get me set up. Perfect. We're four years in and we're still lean forward. I can't hear you. She gets in the distance. Yeah. I don't now, mean to. I just... Even when we do filming for professionals, like um, they all want to hold their microphone down here, and I'm like, you gotta put it up, like yeah, you know. It's yeah. just like, well, bring it closer, honey. How's there you that? go. There you go. <laughs> all right, is this one back on now? Are we good? Oh yeah, it's still recording. All right, so you now need we're to set something up. No, you're gonna display a magic, a magic trick. trick. Are we ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so I said I have a degree in marketing. So one of my favorite days in class was when the teacher, when the teacher came to us and said, hey, uh, subliminal messaging and marketing. The whole class was about that, the whole class. So uh, think about this. In the movie theaters in the olden days, they used to have uh, on the screen 90 frames per second. If just one frame said buy popcorn now, 40 to 60% of the audience would just get up and go buy popcorn. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Totally against the law, but they used to do that, right? They also used to pump the smell of popcorn in the room. They do all kinds of little tricks, right? But the thing with the one image in 90 frames, you, would, you wouldn't know that you saw it, but the back of your brain saw it and told the front of you. It's weird. It's weird how it works. In that little story, we didn't set anything up. I tried to get you to think of a number between 1 and 52, okay? I'm going to show you this. Don't, don't, okay. don't, say, don't say anything yet. Look at this. In here, I have a prediction, so I can't change my mind. Okay, so name any number you want, one through fifty-two. The only number you heard was forty to sixty percent. So name a number. All right, so from one to fifty-two, somewhere in the pack. Twenty-one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. That twenty-first card. <laughs> Wait a second. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's sorry. Okay. sorry. Twenty first card. Seven of hearts. Yep. You want to refilm that? Let's do that yeah. again. Let's, Let's do, do it again. again. Sorry, dude. Again. That's a good trick too. And I'm leaning forward. That's what it is. Sorry. 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 You're all right. Man. He sucks. All right. Ready? Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Ready? <laughs> yep. Do you need to set anything up first? No. Okay. Here we go. I have a degree in marketing. <laughs> there we go. All right. So uh, one of my favorite days in class was the teacher came out and said, hey, uh, we're going to learn about subliminal messaging and marketing. Now, the thing with subliminal messaging and marketing, uh, you could watch a movie and it would be uh, 90 frames per second. If one frame said buy popcorn now, 40 to 60 percent of the audience would just get up and go buy popcorn. That's, that's weird, right? But um, the back of your brain picks it up. The front of your brain 
hears it later from the it's weird in that story though i'm trying to get you to think of a number between one and 52 okay now here's the thing the only numbers you've heard is one and 52. now there's other things they did they pumped the smell of popcorn in the room they did other things but this blip in this image on the screen and they said 40 to 60 percent i'm trying to get you to think of a number give me a number between one and 52 somewhere in the pack uh 35. Ooh, 35. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35th card. The 35th card in this deck of cards is a seven of hearts. Open up that prediction. Seven of hearts. Now here's the thing. I did this at a theater show one night and the kid said, yeah, well, you have a whole deck of seven of hearts. That's how you did the trick. No matter what number I say, it comes out to seven of hearts, right? You could do it that way. You could go to the dollar store, buy 52 decks of cards. You could do it that way. Um, I'm a magician. I do a little different. The only number you could have said was 35 because um, this isn't a regular deck. Uh, this deck is misprinted to be all backs. <laughs> yeah, the only card in this pack was a seven of hearts, and that was at the 35th spot. There you Very go. Very nice. All right, all right. That is awesome. That is very cool. So you just walk around with a bunch of blank cards in your pocket. That crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. You've re you performed with your family, including your wife, daughter, identical twin boys, and even a babysitter. Well, she brings them out on stage. How does performing with your family enhance your shows, and what is one of the most memorable experiences you've had with a family performance? Oh, man. Um Having the family with me on the road, just it changes everything. I did it for 13 years by myself. And um, it brings joy to that monotony of the driving. We had a 19 hour work day last week, a 13 hour work day last week. And um, you know, my, mom's, my mom used to always say misery loves company. And that drive is not fun. The, the show is amazing. I love, that's one of my favorite places in the world to be is on stage. But I make, the drive. I make the worst part of my job an adventure. So the kids are watching movies in the back. We'll stop along the way, stop at a park. Um, I like to skateboard, so we'll find a skateboard park. And my little boys are just sitting on a skateboard. My little girl's playing with her scooter. And we just make an evening of it. We picnic and have fun. On the way home, we're in no hurry to get home. The show's done. So that's, that's fun, and that's exciting, and that's different. And I don't want them to just to be show, home, show, home, show, home either. So... They get to experience some amazing things, like working on the television show, mm -hmm. uh, going to Vegas when I did Fool Us. I mean, she's gotten to ride elephants and camels and the things that she's done at, you know, at five years old. You know, her first airplane ride was... Around five. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. We go to Cancun on vacation every year. We didn't do that when we were little, you know? Yeah. It's, no. it's yeah. pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. So her life is an adventure. You know, other people wish they could do what she does and she's like, it's just another day. A little girl doesn't get Just it going yet. Going to another magic show. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the British Embassy, we get to work the British Embassy. We get to work these million-dollar parties, these amazing ice sculptures of Santa at Christmas time, and it's just—it's amazing. They're spending millions of dollars. There was a party we did. They hired Cirque du Soleil actors just to walk up and down the halls, so they're hanging from the ceiling or they're in a globe walking through the hallway. It's—you don't get to see that at your normal, you know, family Christmas party. Yeah. yeah. No, that is cool. And, um, you know, with me, um, my wife, Lacey, and our son, Logan, um, Logan has his own little TV show called Chef Chocolate, and um, he goes to different restaurants, and he cooks with the restaurant owners, and it's like a full production and everything. And um, being, you know, family-oriented and traveling around with your family, on, you know, from different locations, from filming to, you know, just being at the house, you know, I think it's also good for the kids, too, because... It gets them out, and I think it opens their mind a lot more than just like you know we were talking earlier about this. Like, like there's average people, and then there's extraordinary people. You know what I mean? And um, there's nothing wrong with either one, but I tend to think that you know when you can open up your mind and really see life differently, and really you know be able to find something that you hone on to, and then just be able to chase that all the way to the end. Um, I think there's something to that that um, it's, it's something you're born with. I don't think um, you, it's a learned behavior. And if right. it is, it's probably really hard to learn. You know, it's just like the inner calling. Like, I, I got to do this. It doesn't matter what happens or 
what the situation is or what we're looking at. Like, I have to continue doing what I'm doing, you know? And I think it's really cool, too, with with our our kids and your your son. He's seeing his parents chase their dreams, not doing a job just because they have to have a job. They're doing a job that they love. And so that's going to encourage them to go after their dreams instead of settling for whatever pays the bills not just clock it in and clocking out they're right. actually living their dream and yeah you go for your dreams does yeah. it work for dad exactly yeah yeah and um you know instagram has this voice that says um one day your life will uh, flash before your eyes make sure it's worth watching mm-hmm. so as we dive in we now have the wonderful flavors of Always Flavored here and for people that don't know that we are in Always Flavored here Always Flavored owned by my friend Rita, is a wonderful place where they have sandwiches to their own homemade gourmet hot sauces. So we're going to walk you through these as we continue our podcast. We're going to start from very mild all the way up to the heat. Now, one thing special about Always Flavored is the fact that they don't put heat first. It's always flavored, so you're always going to taste the flavor first, and then the heat's going to slowly kind of heat up on you like an oven, like you know a stove would, you know water. You know, it's not hot right away. So it's really good, and really flavorful. And the first one we're going to be doing is the Rabita's Sweet Virginia Love Barbecue Sauce. This is a level one. It's an award-winning sauce placing number two on the Scovia Awards for barbecue sauce in the unique category. Adds a tangy and sweet explosion of flavor to any meat. Can be used as a glaze, marinade, or condiment for burgers and hot dogs. The perfect balance between sweet and savory brings the taste of Virginia to your kitchen. So, join me. We'll open these up here. You want to join us? I will let you guys do this. I'm, Perfect. Well, by the time you get up here, I'm, I'll, I'll be out anyway. So. Really? Oh. <laughs> I'll be all right. Go for all it. All right. So put a little bit on here. Now, this is my favorite sauce. I religiously use this instead of the barbecue sauce that comes with the nuggets over at McDonald's because if you use their code, you can get 10 piece for $2.50. So when I go get Logan a Happy Meal, mm-hmm. we're going to need some nuggets. And... Um, it's awesome. So this is way better. Is it good? It's good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, and like I said, what's really cool about Rita is she actually hand makes all of these. All of these are her own recipe, her own flavors, her own creations, and that's kind of what's cool is. These aren't, you know, just your average sauces. These are made with love and consideration and definitely flavor in mind. So, as we move forward, let's see here. Over the years, you've used magic to make a positive impact through the Magic of Giving Project. Can you share a heartwarming story about how this project has touched someone's life? Oh, there are so many. Um, I think the top one is the car. So there was a, there was a family whose car had broken down. The lady had, uh, I think she was a single mom with two kids Mm -hmm. and the little girl had like three heart transplants and she was only like nine years old. 10. Yeah. Something like that. And, um, three heart transplants at 10 years old and their car broken down. They, they, they had no transportation. They couldn't take public transportation because she had the mask and all these problems. So um, we produced a car for her to keep uh, with the help of Pepsi and with the help of the, the car dealership and with the help of a whole bunch of people. Uh, we invited her out there and told her we were going to give her a lunar car. But we said we need to take a picture with her first. And we had my banner with my name on it and everything. And we held that up. And I produced a toy car for her. And I said, this is what we have for you. Well, not this, this. And we dropped the banner and made a car appear. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, my memory of that and my, what I say about that is long after that car is dead and gone, that lady will never forget the day that that magician made a car appear for her to mm-hmm. keep. It's just something that's going to live forever. But, I mean, we visit the children's hospital every, well, a regular hospital in the children's ward mm-hmm. every Christmas. We go on Christmas Day. They try to get the kids out of the hospital at Christmas time. So if I can just patch them up, get them home at Christmas, if they have to come back, they have to come back. But go home for Christmas. 
So the kids that are there at Christmas, I feel like really need your love, right? They weren't even, they couldn't get patched up. So we go room to room and I do close up magic for them and nice. I give them a magic kit. And uh, we had a story. I'm going to tell the story about the, the lights and everything. Okay. I, I was doing it at the bedside of the table. I walk in the room. I don't know anything. When I started in magic, 18 years old, my first, like, going out on my own, I worked King's Daughter's Hospital in Virginia Beach, and a nurse just came over and said, hey, go see Tommy over there. He probably won't be here next week. He's got cancer real bad. Mm. Now with HIPAA laws, they don't tell you anything. So you just mm. go into the room cold, right? Mm, okay. So I have to look over everything. So I go in the room, and I say, hey, and they'll tell me his name, Bob, Tommy, whatever. Tommy sounds good. This is Tommy. He's 14. And you go in the room and you have to do calculations quick. Can he? Does he have two hands? Can he help me with a card trick? Do I just perform at him? Do I include him? Yeah. I am have to do all this real quick. I got in there. This kid, his eyes roll back in his head. He's got a trick tube in. Mm. He's out. They, they've drugged him. He's out. So I immediately turn to the parents and I start performing for them and the little sister. And they started giggling. They started having a great time. And the dad follows me out of the room and puts his hand on my back. And he says, I can't thank you enough. It's Christmas. I just found out last night my son's going to be paralyzed the rest of his life. Mm. He's sleigh rotten. And it, oh, man, that's horrible. Oh, right? my gosh. I mean, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But he didn't think he could laugh and have fun at a moment like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's That kind of stuff It just sticks with you. I'll never forget that family. I'll never forget that experience. Because I walked in there and I felt Natalie was with me videotaping. It felt like the room was cold when we walked in. Everybody's got their head down. Everybody's looking at Tommy. And I saw whites of his eyes. I mean, he was out, but his eyes were open. But the family, it felt like they turned up the heat in the room. It felt like the lights went up. I mean, just the whole energy of the room changed. And by the time I left, the dad walked out, and then he was crying with me in the hallway telling me the story. It's stuff like that. You just never know what you're going to get. Some some years we go at um, Hall- at Christmas time and there would be you know four kids at the hospital. Sometimes there's 37 kids, and it doesn't matter if there's two kids. You're uh, you're affecting them. You're giving them a special moment that can't be store bought. It's just it's you're amazing. Taking experience. them out of their misery for a minute. Yeah. yeah, me and Lacey did a big video project for a company or an organization nonprofit called only make believe and they started in new york and they have offices here in uh, washington dc we were working in partnership with uh children's hospital and um they have the, something very similar it's not magic but what they do is they hire well they don't hire it's all volunteer work they get actors and they do theater so they put on plays and the same type of thing you know you watch these kids either um sometimes you have to go to their room or sometimes they'll be in like the hospital like we were in the Ryan Seacrest studio um, at the um, Children's Hospital, and all the children came down, you know, like, and we were at another school with them. But like you said, you know, you see these kids come in, they got like, like you know, they're walking with IV bags, or you know, they got stuff, you know, medical stuff all over them, and they look sick. And then you go in there, and you know, the power of like theater or magic or something like that, you know, and it just takes people away and. You just you start to see all these people and they don't look sick anymore at during like during it they're dancing around they're moving you know and it just brings so much energy so you know it's a lot it's a lot more than just card tricks you know but that's mm-hmm. every show is like that though you do a five thousand seat auditorium somebody's parents have just passed away yeah you yeah. take their mind away from that for a second you know I, I, my kid needs braces so that's gonna cost me how much I don't have that my bills are tight this month but for that hour and a half illusion show. That's all gone. You, we erase it. We just we shake that etch a sketch, and you're just gonna have fun right now. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Reality will come back after the show. Right. And that's why I, I just want to think it's so important is to be able to make an impact like that, like something that you like you said. You know, when you donated that car, the car's gonna break down one day, and they'll probably sell it or just wind up in a junkyard. But that memory, you know what I mean? That one day they remember, you know. And I think that's the most important thing. So. What else is important is moving forward to our next hot sauce, which is the Rabita's Mild Hot Sauce. This is an award-winning sauce claiming number two in the Scovia Awards for prepared sauce category. Delivers a delightful kick without an overpowering the dish, dish, the dish's essence. Crafted with a blend of jalapenos, serranos, and long chilies, 
Versatile sauce, perfect for Mexican and Mediterranean dishes. All natural ingredients, gluten-free and free from preservatives. I'll let you go first. Jalapenos. Yeah. And now, like like um, what I was saying earlier, you're going to notice flavor and then the slow amount of heat. And that's really what I love about this is um, you get that. Oops. Well, now the other one's going to taste like that, too. Uh-huh. I'm going to do it over here. Mm-hmm. Very flavorful. You do taste the flavor of the jalapeno more than the heat. Yes, and I like it. This is the entire, like, this is the entire concept of this hot sauce is that exact thing. Is you're always gonna taste flavor, then the heat's secondary. A lot of times I want more jalapeno flavor, but they give me too much heat in a regular jalapeno. I'm like, "Mm, I like the flavor though. I like, yeah, this is good. Boom. We'll make sure you get a bottle from nah. Rita to take home with you. <laughs> and you can buy them all here. And if you want and you're not local, you can buy them online as well if you go to alwaysflavored.com. And they have them on there as well. All right. So, moving forward. <laughs> you've been involved with a wide range of magical endeavors, from live performance to consulting on TV shows like The Carbonero Effect. What are... How do you balance various aspects of your magical career? We just take it day by day, you know? And, and like I said, you know, we call our show Wes Isley's Magic Life because every day is magical. It sounds hokey, but whether we have a, we have, we run a magic shop or we sell magic tricks all over the world. We have, um, you know, we do 400 shows a year. We do close up magic. We do illusion shows. If I get hired as consulting, that's the hat I'm wearing that day. I mean, it's just, but it's still magic. It's still that universe. Uh, when I was 18 years old, I kind of got burned out on magic. I was working a magic shop, and every new trick, while I was going to college, I was working at the magic shop, and every new trick that came in was a new card trick, a new card trick, a new. I'm like, man, I'm just sick of card trick. I'm sick of magic. And I remember a couple days just kind of like just this down feeling, and then it just hit me. I'll never learn it all. There's escape magic, there's animal magic, there's comedy magic, there's uh, illusions, there's mind-reading magic. I'll never learn it all, and I've never gotten bored since. It was just something, just with the monotony of running a magic shop. But I've never, I've, once I got past that wall, it was, it was golden. Every day has just been a blessing. Every day has just been like I'm seven years old again. I'm just playing magic. When I have friends come over, I tell my wife, hey, Ron's coming over. We're playing magic. Mm. It's a play date. It's a play date. date. Yeah, I'm like a little (laughs) kid, man. But I feel like I'm getting away with something. I get to do magic. I get to do this for a living, man. Yeah. I support my family. We have a beautiful home. We have an RV we travel around in. Magic's paid for it all. Yeah. I've won the lottery. It might not be the lottery other people want to be in, but for Mm -hmm. what I wanted, I hit the lottery. Yeah, and I think that's ultimately what you get, you know, um, when you're with your family and you're being able to do what you want. You know, same with our production company. You know, we went from a very small beginnings with me and Lacey to, you know, being able to do what we want and having that financial freedom and, you know, just kind of carrying on. I think also, too, you know, uh, when you work with your family, it helps you stay a little bit more focused and grounded and you don't have to worry about being screwed over, you know, Mm -hmm. because, you know, their their goal is your goal, you know, and you can't find a better partner, you know, because I work with Lacey all the time, and she's my right hand man, literally, you know, like twenty four seven. She's like Jarvis, and I'm like Iron Man, you know. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Know, I can sense that. She's my yeah. she's my uh, podcast co host because it's like, oh man, what was I gonna say, Natalie? She knows because we're together twenty four hours a yeah. day. Yeah. There's a great quote uh, from a magic documentary, and the guy he was probably sixty at the time, and he's like, I've been married to my wife for eighty three years. I mean, I'm only 60, but I've been married to my wife 83 years. And the, the interviewer was like, what? Well, a normal family's only together, another normal couple's only together four hours an evening, or four hours a day, two yeah. hours in the morning, two hours at night. We're together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we've been married 80 years in a normal household. So my wife and I have the same situation. Mm-hmm. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're always together. So, yep. yeah. And- same with our son, um, Lacey. She also homeschools. She's nice. been doing that since the beginning of time. 
And um, same with us. We're together 24-7. There is no degree of separation. You know, it's always on the go. But, you know, you made a good point earlier, too, is even with, you know, video production and working with clients, you know, yes, it's the same thing day after day after day, you know, because we do consulting as well. You know, obviously, you know, we do full production. But, you know, at the same time, I like you feel the same sense that sometimes I feel like I'm robbing people. Like, you know, like you're asking me to hold a camera and make this video and... You know, this is, you know, this is for me, this is just doing something that I love to do. So it's kind of like, you know, like you guys hate your job. You know, I like mine. You know, you kind of keep your head down and not smile too much. Let them know you enjoy it. Does Lacey talk to the clients? Does Lacey oh, yeah. do the booking for you? She everything. has to do the booking for me because I would do it all for free. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah exactly. So um, everybody that has ever been friends with me or knows Lacey has always said that Lacey needs to be the boss and I need to be the creative mind and let her do all the work and Lacey does that so she takes care of everything from scheduling to talking with clients to actual shooting like so before Logan was born every time we would have a shoot Lacey had a camera in her hand and she was with me so you know she's all spectrums you know and all my businesses so it's not just you know good luck stuff we have four other companies and you know ride or die type thing and that's what you got to have to be successful i think you know you need people to believe in you and you also need to be surrounded by people who really want the best for you you know because the people you hang around with and or associate with you know if they if they don't love what you, they like one of the celebrities said you know the three rules that he has is one of them is when you walk into a room everybody should light up you know and if you don't have that sense like with your kids or your family or your wife you know you really need to get around people because people can destroy your dreams not you you know what i mean and you know you run into situations like that well nobody thought i'd make it as a magician because I mean, they have would. no there's no guideline for that exactly They're, and now all right you have a family how are you going to do that we got to figure it out. I don't, I'm not stopping. We got to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. yeah now you we don't have see twins. That often. Now yeah. we have twins. Yeah. How do we do that? We bought an RV because I don't know how else to do it. I mean, we got a potty train on the road because I don't yeah. know how else to do it. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a that's an adventure that hasn't happened yet, but we're dreading it. And well, not with boys <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. Right. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> Well, what else is crazy is this next hot sauce we got coming up here. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Which is. The Rabita's Hot Sauce, authentic flavor made with habaneros, red chili peppers, and serranos. Not overly spicy, allowing you to enjoy the honey. Allowing you to enjoy its authentic flavor, great on everything, versatile for various dishes, offers a delight balance of heat and flavor. A hot sauce like no other. Love. Here, lay down. Come on. All the way down. Come on. Down. Good girl. All right. She says you're talking about food over there. I can smell oh, that right. food. <laughs> Imagine how much she smells this chicken. I know. She's doing good. She's a sweetheart. Oh, I guess I didn't know, haven't opened this one yet. This is why we don't do this live. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after these commercials. All right. <laughs> you gotta try this green sauce. Just put your finger in it. It doesn't have jalapenos. any heat. It doesn't have any heat. I don't like jalapenos. Oh, it's just the jalapeno flavor. I know. I know you're dipping your finger in it. No, she won't do that either. <laughs> So, this is the uh, hot sauce by Rita. Yeah, the ones that they get like the hotter heat have like the restrictor plate on it. The ones with oh. low heat don't. There you go. The restrictor plate. I want a lot of sauce. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. Me too. Whether it's hot or not. You end up with hiccups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are on number three on the heat scale right now. And as you see, when you bite into it, it's flavor, and then the heat is slowly coming up, but it's not too unbearable. You know what I mean? 
It's not something that this isn't designed to make you go run to the bathroom and you know puke and feel like shit for days. You know, <laughs> if that didn't have a restrictor plate, I'd be in trouble because I feel a little heat, but I'm good. That's just easy. That's easy. Yeah. All right, that's three hots. What is the? Does it go real hot? So we're gonna go up to fours. So we have oh, four. We're good. We're good. Four level fours. Then we go to five. So five. signal one is number five. Okay. Serious heat. Mm. Oh yeah. That's what it says. See, I bet that has a little plate on it. So that's where I uh, get the hiccups, probably. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about your podcast, West Eyeless. Isley. I'm so sorry. Isley. That's okay. As you, if you've probably heard throughout this podcast, can't at least talk or read. Um, <laughs> You're fine. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your podcast, West Isley Magic Life. Um, it's been running for about four years now. What inspired you to start your podcast, and how does it contribute to your journey? We started our podcast during the pandemic because we were magicians that were unemployed with twins on the way during a pandemic. We had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luckily, we had savings, but there was nothing going on for us. Um, the only thing magicians could do during the pandemic was those uh, virtual shows. But right. that We didn't find success in it. I don't know very many magicians that did. Um, but I love podcasts, and I did some research on it. And I'm like, honey, we have a story to tell. Our television show follows us around week by week, but there's stories that happen that we don't get on video. And we have story, lots of stuff that doesn't get on video. So that's, that's where the podcast comes into play. We started out by telling our story of our magic life and how we got together and how we met and our first illusion shows together that obviously wasn't on film. We didn't start recording until six years into our marriage, right? Yeah. Not Something so, like that. Yeah. So we have a lot of stories back then. And then we started interviewing people and then it's just taken on a life of its own. It's so much fun. I, I love it. We do one episode every single week. It's one hour long. It's on any streaming platform and on YouTube. And we just uh, signed a deal with our television network that they're gonna put it on one of the streaming services. It's called Red Coral Universe. So there's gonna be an umbrella of Wes Isley in the channel clickable, so you can watch the podcast or you can see the television show or vice versa. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, and see, that's all the opportunities that have come through magic, through simple magic tricks, you know, and that's kind of the idea with any of this is you have the opportunity on earth to live out your dream. The problem is it's going to take a long time and um even when jeff bezos uh, for the first time met, met warren buffett he said warren your book is so easy why don't more people just read your book and become a millionaire and warren buffett said most people don't want to get rich over time mm. you know what i mean and i think that's also you know not just you know money but it's also you know the entrepreneurial journey is it's you know these these overnight successes these people that we see you know just pop up on the air you, when you look at them, like, you know, like Jimmy Kimmel and a lot of these, like, famous people like Steve Harvey, if you go back in time, you'll see them doing what they're doing now, then, you know what I mean? And that's what you don't see, you know what I mean? And a lot of these great people come from nothing. And I think when you come in a position where you don't live in abundance, um, everything's on the line. Um, you got, you know, kids, you got, you know, your life, you got payments, you got all this stuff. I think there's also like a glory in that because, you know, you're standing against something that most people would just like file bankruptcy and just, like get me out of this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you're, you know, it's kind of like those who walk through the fire get stronger. And, um, you know, there's something definitely to that. Speaking of which, your father played a significant role in your journey as a magician. Can you share a specific memory or lesson that you learned from him that continues to influence your career today? Oh man, that, yeah. So my dad had the video store and uh, I watched magic. I, w I watched anything that came in there that had anything to do with magic and that was my favorite, right? But um, my dad just really supported me. His, his good customers that would come through the door all the time, Wes, go show him a trick, <laughs> Wes, go show him a trick. And then eventually they started asking, and I'm like a, a 10 year old kid, this is awesome. Dad's showing me this kind of love and like putting me on a pedestal. And then as you know, I'm a teenager trying to make it through the world, going to college, working in a magic shop, 
my mom's like, w- what are you going to do for a real job? W- what are you going to do for a real job? Hmm. Yeah, she worked. She was a nurse at UVA. Uh, at UVA. So um, she was like, uh, you know, they're hiring in the x-ray department. You could, you have 401k. I think you have, you know, one of those stable jobs. And yeah. I'm like, I don't want that, mom. I don't want that. So uh, dad would slip me money under the table and take care of me and support me. And, you know, he was, he was my biggest fan, man. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd be here today doing this. I, I feel like I would because I'm stubborn and I love my job so much. But my dad definitely helped me so much get where I am today, just because he gave me that support and that back, you know, that stick to itness. Yeah, and I I think that's very important. You know, um, through my journey, my dad has definitely been supportive. But my dad is like, so if you guys have ever read Rich Dad Poor Dad, there's two types of mindset in the world. There's the um, like the mindset that you know you have to be very careful and everything has to be planned out and you know you have to live inside like guidelines and stuff like this and get like you say get a like safe job and then there's the thought of but what if there's more you know what I mean and um, my dad who's a very very smart person um, lives inside that lifestyle of like the poor thing where it's like well you know they have 401k and they have benefits and you can do this and you can do that and it's just like but what if that's not what I want? And like, if you look at like um, Kevin Leary, he says that a paycheck is what they give you to forget about your dream. A salary. Yeah. yeah. A salary. Yeah. Yeah. You know a what I mean? Paycheck. Yeah. yeah. And it's so easy, you know. And that I've said this in the other podcast too, but that's why they say the graveyard is the richest places in the world because there you can find ideas and inventions and thoughts and creations that never came to light that died with these people mm. because they just they didn't have what it took to make it you know real and i think too you know with logan um my son i'm like you know by 10 years old i want you to have a business plan and and figure out what you want to do and be making money because i'm telling them all the time like you don't have to to do it the hard way you could do it the smart way and by 18 21 years old you're buying your first house you know what i mean you're you you have everything planned out you know you're not playing catch up while you're raising kids and trying to figure out where money's coming from and trying to live out your dream and all this stuff too. So, you know, there, I think, you know, dad was very right of um, pushing you towards that. Probably also gave you a lot of confidence, you know, it gave you a lot of satisfaction. Like, you know, not only am I confident to perform the trick, trick in front of somebody, but I'm also confident enough that people value this, you know, people want to see this, you know, and my dad wants me to show people this, you know, and that's very powerful. It wasn't just a cute kid thing. It was, watch what my kid can do. This is awesome, right? Yeah, very proud. But you were talking about the, the graveyard. It's also just like you have. We have a great support system. So when we try something, she reels me back in in some projects. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that's too far. You, that's too far off the diving board. You're too close to the ledge. Come back. We'll come to that later or we'll try that or tweak it this way and I have heard that I can bounce ideas. On the way here, we were bouncing ideas back and forth. This might sound crazy, Nat, but I have this idea just constantly. And somebody that you can talk to those ideas then say, hey, this might be crazy, but what if I can play those games with her? Mm-hmm. And she she's with me 100%, and like you have with Lacey. Yep, no, yeah. and that's what you need. And they say behind every great man is a woman. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I think there is truth to that. Um, Let's see here. Let's move on to another great hot sauce here. We're going to move on to the Thai chili sauce. A tantalizing Thai chili sauce made with hand-pecked fresh farm chilies, offering a zesty uh, profile and a slight sweet goodness. Provides a delightful departure from your ordinary hot sauce, meticulously crafted with the attention to flavor and texture. A perfect alternative for a discerning palate. All right, I'll let you go first. Perfect. All right. So this is number four on the heat scale. So we are moving up. I guess these are all new bottles. Natalie, check the rest of the bottles. That's what you can do. <coughs> That's what I would be doing with Lacey. I'm like, Lacey, can you just make sure the bottles are good? I think the rest are open. Okay. <laughs> Right. See, this one doesn't have a restrictor cap, but it should. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we're four. 
Yep. Is that a four? Yep. Okay. Honey, uh, down. All the way. Come on. I'll save some chicken for you, but all the way. Come on. Down. All right, here we go. You doused the four. Okay. All right, you ready? Here we go. It's a slow build. That's what I'm saying. It's slow. Yeah, it doesn't hit you hard first. Hold on. It's coming. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I have his water right there if you want to grab that for me. Do you want water? I could put it over here beside me. Sorry about that. And you might have a Coke while you're down there. Yes, please. Thank you. It's a three. Oh, you know what? It is a three. So what do you think? I think it's great. Right? Yeah. That's what I love, like I said, and I'll say it again. That's what I love about her sauces is if you really want a culinary experience and actually be able to enjoy some of these hotter peppers, this is the way to do it. We got a whole kit at Christmas time, and I'm just I'm scared. I, I love hot sauce, but I'm scared because I'm not a person that wants the immense heat. These are just fantastic. These are great. Yeah. No, they are. And um, what's also cool, too, and you know it's all about following your dream this is somebody's dream this is you know and now it's come to life it's a real product you know what i mean and that's the byproduct of believing is all of this you know what i mean this is somebody's creation and we're now we're a part of it somehow so moving on let's see here you've emphasized um, you've emphasized the importance of staying humble and authentic regardless of fame or success can you share an experiment or experience where this lesson became especially relevant in your life I'll let you take that one I don't know I think from watching other people um, you see other people who have magic shows or whatever and you watch how they treat people coming up um, I know there was one magic show that we watched um, I won't say who it is but there was a little boy that you could just see he was a little Wes he loved magic he was so excited to meet this magician and he got up there to take a picture and the magician was just kind of gruff and rude and mm. took a picture and when the mom went to take a picture he was putting his hand over the kid's face to do yeah. this and the mom got a picture of this right wow so she, and so said, she asked to take it again and he was like oh and he did it but I mean, and I just saw the bubble burst in that little boy. And so that made me very, I, I watch what, how we treat people. Anybody who comes up, I don't care how tired you are. I don't care if they waited and you know the line has gone through and you're halfway done packing up your show and they come up and they wanna meet you, you're nice. Yeah. And you know, if somebody's waiting off to the side and Wes is just talking with a friend that just came to the show, I'll just tap him and say, Hey, this little kid right here, he really wants to talk to you. And he'll be like, Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, yeah. And he'll give him full attention. And so it's just from watching other people and seeing the reactions that they've gotten. And I don't want that type of reaction. Yeah. I want to build somebody up instead of burst their bubble. Right. That's a great answer. That's that's perfect to answer that question. Yeah, Thanks. I knew exactly where you were going as soon as you started it. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and to follow up with what you're saying, I mean, you are essentially in these eyes like a superhero right. to these to these people, right? Yeah. So it's like if Superman was like drunk and you're like, wait a minute, you're not you don't act like Superman. You don't right. even look like Superman. Why do I even like you anymore? Why would I even like superheroes? You know what I mean? Right. It could really throw somebody off, you know? And I also think too, as a performer, you know, that is your job description as an entertainer. So it, when you're out in public, you're on the spot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? People expect you to be whoever you are. You know what I mean? And you kind of have to be cool with that. You know, because that's a good way to, you know, shoot yourself in the foot. And your client, you know, your client base, in your case, your fan base is everything. That's what makes you, you right. know? And you see so many of these people who, um, have reality shows and now and then they get into po political stance and then they lose everything you yeah. know because they started upsetting people based on you know who they truly are and 
unfortunately in this world not everybody that's great on TV is a great person in real life you yeah, know yeah I hate it when people say never meet your hero that just that hurts my heart you know what I mean like you look up to somebody you're like wow they seem like they would be a really cool person in real life and then you meet them and your bubble is burst and it's like I don't want that for anybody who is looking at Wes or even me or even our kids and is like wow I really want to meet them I want to be like oh, I met them and they were awesome you know yeah. I, that's yeah we're constantly teaching our kids our babysitter we haven't started teaching the babies yet because they're only two but their eyes are on them the entire time people mm -hmm. recognize me in public that's Wes's kids I remember when my little girl was like four that my wife took a picture in the audience and my little girl was scratching her nose I don't think she was picking her nose but the camera got the picture here she was off stage she wasn't performing but she was in the eyesight of the camera somebody can see you honey when you're out front of that curtain you're on yep. Whether you're picking up a piece of cardboard off the floor, a card off the floor, whether you're doing anything, eyes are on you. Whether everybody's focused on me and I'm juggling, I'm doing something amazing, I have a bunny in my hand, there's people watching you. Yeah. So act right. <laughs> um, I, I can't have her being sad. I told her, I told my wife before we even had her, I've seen magicians or, or jugglers or... Any performer. Uh, yeah, any performer that has their teenagers up there and <laughs> they're dead. And you know, at a county fair where they have a family act and they get to be that teenage age. And I told my little girl, you don't have to be in the show. We're not making you do this. You do have to come with us, yeah, right? right? But you don't have to be in the show. If you're not happy, you're not in the show. And I don't want, a, I don't want that. I don't want the audience to see that. And I don't want that for her. So we right. were very open with that. But I showed her that picture people. and I said, I don't know what you were doing, but it looks like you're picking your nose, honey. Mm -hmm. We have to, yeah, you're on. You're on from the minute you pull up at the location of the show to the minute you leave. And I have to tell a babysitter that too, because she'll be on the phone and the kids are running around. Well, people walk by, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like she's babysitting them. No, no. Right. That's, that's what the eyes see. So we have to let her know that too. So we're constantly right. teaching people about show business and people are watching. Yeah. <clears throat> no, and I and I definitely agree. And even with production, you know, um, I've had people that I've hired um, come on, you know, for like ten ninety nines for extra work, and like some people just they are they show that they are they could rather be doing something else other than, than this, and it's like, we're, and you make a good point, you know, everybody's watching, but two also that subconsciously is going to affect you. Because you're gonna look over and you're gonna get upset, and then you're gonna have to like think split second like think okay and well I'm still in front of people but now I'm I'm really upset with what's going on, on the side because now everybody I know people are looking over there, so you know for you as an artist you know you need to have an A team that is is totally aligned believes just like you do because if not um, different mindsets can throw things off you know it's like telling your enemy your like your secrets you know like that can that can be damaging especially for the non-believers you know right, people right. who think that it's dumb and also you know to those kids you know they don't understand what you understand now that it could take you there but they don't see it like that because they're not in, you know informed on the level of possibilities other, over that and I think also that's society's problem too because you know in the school system you know you want to be like everybody else you want to be good you want to like Steve Jobs says you want to stay inside the lines not make too much noise and I think it's the exact opposite to be successful in life you need to know yourself and you need to know what you love to do because if you don't then why how's it going to get better why would you care to make your product better or make your show better or to care to you know make sure that you're nice to every single person you wouldn't you know right, there's right. nothing stopping you from you know being like that yeah if i worked a regular job i was working walmart i wouldn't care how i looked yeah. i wouldn't care how i acted oh, it no. just it wouldn't matter mm. it doesn't yeah. matter you could be a jerk to anybody anytime 24 hours it doesn't there's no repercussion for that it doesn't matter well let's talk about something that does matter <laughs> <laughs> you're great transition dude you're segues. doing great you're yeah. doing great <laughs> the brady's tequila sunrise this is a collaboration with 96.9 The Rock using Sunrise Scorpion Peppers, Smoked Ghost Peppers, Agave Tequila, balanced with dried cherries, orange juice for the perfect blend of heat and flavor. Inspired by music and created with a touch of creativity, intense heat combines 
with enjoyful, enjoyable fruity flavors as a unique twist to your culinary creations. And what's cool about this is um, when they did the collaboration, the main guy there, he actually picked all most of all of this stuff and then Rita actually worked with him to bring his sauce to life. So this is his vision with all these flavored delivery, you know what I mean? So it's gonna be good. And what's cool is when you do taste this, you are going to taste the tequila. You know, a lot of times they say, oh, it does has bourbon or alcohol in it, and you're like, well, I didn't taste any of it. You know, it must have been cooked into it. When you bind to this, you're gonna taste the tequila. Got my finger. Always flavored, man. It really is. <laughs> yeah. It always has flavor first. It really does. That's what I'm telling you. You say that, but you don't believe it. But yeah, flavor first, and then slowly the heat comes in. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like someone slowly turned on the burner, you know, instead of just, you know, throwing you into a hot flame here. That's wild. Mm hmm. And that's, and that's what is great, because, you know, like what we just talked about here was you just had a sample of. Ghost peppers, which are one of the hottest peppers out there. Scorpion peppers, another very hot pepper. Um, and look, we didn't even you didn't even drink water. I didn't even drink my soda. You it's know what I mean? Yet. And to be able to enjoy that is amazing because typically this is something that you'd be running to the bathroom with. So maybe not. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. No, and that's why I like having people here because it truly shows you. The, the creativity that's out there. You know, people are like, oh, hot sauce needs to be hot. Well, hers are, hot sauce needs to be flavorful. You know what I mean? So, um, you've performed in a wide variety of audiences, from resorts, trade shows, family reunions. How do you adapt your performances to suit different types of environments and events? I, I, I think it's just pretty natural. When, you, when you're performing for 5,000, you just project bigger. Um, we also have the projection screen so we can videotape it and shoot it up there as well. But when you're performing for a family reunion, it, you feel like you're part of the family. What's funny for me that when I do like a, a corporate show and I'll pick on people from the audience, mm. that was our CEO you got up there and did that with. I can't believe you did that. I don't know who that guy is. He's just a dude to me. But that's what makes up. But that's what makes them special, right? Because they put him on a pedestal. But I'm just the entertainer coming in, having fun with a person. It's still just a person, no matter how many zeros he gets on his check. And they can't have that interaction with them. But I'm an outsider, so I can. Yep. And that makes it that. That's pretty special. Yeah. And I think you know too. Um, you know, in business, as a business owner. That's one of the cool things that you do get, and that's kind of thing. One of the the attractive things about being a business owner is one, you're seen differently, and two, you get to have relationships with different people, like me with Rita. You know, I get to have my podcast at her restaurant because I'm friends with her, and she's the owner of this place. You know, it allows those opportunities to really, you know, set in because you're right, you don't work for them. You know right. what I mean? You were hired here, so this is part of your gig. This is what they paid you to be for. So right. if they get upset, well. I'm sorry, you yeah, know. Yeah. Next, make them wear a badge next time. Shit, you know, yeah. like goddamn. No, but they don't. They don't get upset, and the it, they they just usually say, "I can't believe you did that." You know who that guy was? No, I don't know who that guy was. Just a dude from the audience. I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty awesome. It's fun. It's fun. So, um, let's see here. As someone who's experienced the highs and lows of showbiz, what advice do you have for aspiring magicians or illusionists? Um, who are just starting a journey. Marketing, business. You could have, there are magicians that, there's something called the uh, FISM, which is the Federation International Society of Magicians. FISM is the Olympics of magic. It's held in a foreign country every four years. There, I would say 95% of the winners aren't full-time magicians. Oh, wow. They're the best magicians in the world. But either they don't know how to market their product, they only have eight minutes, so they can't do a full evening show, they only have an amazing eight minutes, or they're just hobbyists to begin with, or they don't know how to market their product. 
there are people making great money in music and in magic or lots of industries that aren't that great. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they have a true. great they have a great <laughs> people behind them. They have a great system in place to get their marketing out there to get those gigs booked, right? And then there are people that have both. They have a great show and great system behind them to get them going. 400 shows a year is what we do, what we average. And people are like, "Wow, what, what are you what are you working on now? Booking next year." Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, yeah. No, and that's cool. Um, I also feel like too, you know, people I assume that well, you're 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 a magician, so you must have a lot of time on your hands. You can't right. be that busy. And what people don't realize is once you get really involved with your hobby, you're nothing but busy. And the, you know, also too is you got to focus on not only be just being busy, but also being productive. And those are two different things as well. You know, you can be busy all the time and still not be making any money or making things happen. You know, so. I think, you know, people, when they look at you, um, you know, from the outside in, they probably wonder, like, is it all real? You know, can you have that financial freedom? And then they look at you. But I think a lot of people, when they do look at other people like that, they're looking at the wrong things. You know what I mean? They got to backtrack. Okay, well, where do these people come from? How long has somebody been doing something? You know, what have they done to get themselves to that level? And I think that's a lot of the things that, you know, um, my advice for entrepreneurs would be is, do your research. Look at some of these people. Look how long they've actually been doing this. Like a lot of these talk show hosts, they were doing this back in the 90s, early 80s. You know what I mean? Long, long time. And now they're just in the limelight. So When we were booking this, how, how much was I on the phone? Like what else do you need? What else do you need? I was up for this. Before podcasts came out, I was doing radio, television spots anytime I could. We don't like getting up at four in the morning, <laughs> but if you if you want to hire me for a TV morning spot, I'm there. Yeah. I'm up and I'm there. And podcast is that, but it's long form. You don't have thirty seconds. You're getting up at four in the morning, driving an hour and a half to do a television spot. That's maybe four minutes. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. This you people really get to know you. And uh, I don't know where we were at, where we were going with that, but man, I'm I just love this. I, I'm just so excited. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Where we are going is our next hot sauce. <laughs> All right. I, that was okay. That was okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So this means another hot sauce. So we've got the Wrath of Rita. You know, they say Uh-oh. hell has no fury like a, war- a woman scorned, right? So with the Wrath of Rita, we have a sensational blend of Carolina Reapers, Ghost Reapers, Habanero Peppers, masterfully combined with ripe mangoes and pineapples for a fruit infused heat delivers an unforgettable journey for your palate the perfect balance between intense heat and mouth-watering fruitness unleashes limitless possibilities and adds a fiery edge to any dish so i haven't met rita there's no pictures of her in here but i imagine her a sweet little lady so how bad could her wrath really be? Oh. <laughs> no, Rita's a badass, and she's I'll let you awesome. Go first. And we should just like post a picture like right now of her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see if this has the restrictor cap. It does. All right. Who knows we're going up? I'm watching how much you put on there. I'm gonna do it, man. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Nothing, and then it builds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow. It's coming. The so I coming love on. I love hot sauce, man. And I'm telling you, I've never had a hot sauce that started just mild, just you taste a flavor, and then it slowly... I've never had anything... I've never experienced anything like this before. It's amazing. Yeah, it's I time, love it. It's time release. <laughs> this way it allows you to get your an, um, antacids in before <laughs> the next morning. Yeah. That's funny. All right. We're almost done with the love. I love you. Here. Here's payment. Yo. All right. Mm. Down. Down. My spot's sweating now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your dedication to charity work, like raising money for the Children's Miracle Network and your magic of giving project is inspiring. How do you find a balance between your career and um, 
philanthropy efforts? So with my dad being everything, he was uh, my rock. I mean, he, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my dad. And my dad had Parkinson's disease. He got diagnosed when I was seven. So I saw my dad go from a strong guy to he was walking hunched over. Um, he didn't have the shakes, but you couldn't read his handwriting. He mumbled when he talked. It's You have to project and you have to use muscles and it deteriorates muscles. So to project, it's hard. So he mumbled and walked hunched over. People knew something was wrong, but it wasn't a shaky thing, right? So when he was dying, um, I started doing work for the Parkinson's research and um, the Michael J. Fox Foundation. After he died, I really just stepped it up, just in memory of my dad. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for dad. I got to do something for dad. And um, I had this idea um, to do a 24-hour magic show to raise money for the um, Parkinson's research. And I, I need to find a location that's 24 hours. Car dealership, mm, they have lights on 24 hours, but there's no traffic. Walmart is like the only thing open 24 hours. Yeah, yeah? Back then, right? Pre-pandemic. And um, so I approached a Walmart. They said no. I approached another Walmart. No. Shoot, I think this will be great. Approached another Walmart. No. I approached six different Walmarts before one said, Wes, we know you. Yeah, yeah get yeah. in here. But we don't – that's not our charity that we work with. Are you stuck with them or would you mind helping with the Children's Miracle Network? Children's Miracle Network is a great charity. I want to do this publicity thing, right, to raise money for charity – why not? So yeah. I started it wanting to do it for Parkinson's. But, I mean, starting out in magic, it was 90% kids' birthday parties when I was starting out. I love kids, sick kids. I'm doing the hospitals anyway. Yes, that's a win-win situation. It's still a win-win situation. I ended up doing a 24-hour magic show in front of Walmart for 10 years straight. Wow. And the only reason I stopped it was because I felt like I topped out where I could get. And I started it from when I was 30 to when I was 40. And being up 24 hours on the sidewalk, I always did it the weekend around Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It was cold. It was yeah. miserable. But I also think, from marketing point of view, if I'd have done it in the middle of the summer when it was beautiful outside, people wouldn't have cared. It wouldn't have got the press. Yeah. More people showed up because it was cold. I got snowed on. I got sleeted on. It was raining. It was awful. It was picking up coins in the cold. <coughs> coins felt like ice cubes because the metal is colder than the temperature outside so it hurt to do coin tricks in the middle hmm. of the night um but i'd have cops show up in the middle of the night what are you doing out here well i'm out here 20 24 really and they pull their cop cars up they had the heat on they just stick their head out show me a trick <laughs> so i'm doing tricks for the cops and then another cop would show up hey bob get over here and another cop <laughs> and they, i was surrounded by cops all but i'm just showing magic to the cop they were on duty but they were waiting on a call and i was just showing them magic and but that kept me entertained. When I'd have somebody come at 3 in the morning, they were entertaining me as much as I was entertaining them because it kept the time going. Because you're out there 24 hours. You know, prime time's easy. 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night, that's easy. 3 o'clock in the morning, it gets pretty slow. It gets really cold. It gets really boring. It gets really lonely. She was there the first couple years, but after we had our baby, we don't want to keep the baby outside 24 Great hours. excuse to go home. <laughs> yeah, right. And stay in the warm. Yeah, yeah, she was tucked in in bed, and I'm out there twiddling my thumbs doing card tricks. But we raised great money. We raised amazing amount of money for the people and uh, for the kids, for the children's hospital. And the parents would come up and say, God bless you. You know, my kid had an open heart surgery at three days old. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I was like, golly, yeah. But it was just, it was amazing. So how do I find time to do it? We just make time to do it. You schedule it in. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you really want to do it, yep. you're going to make time for it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we get a question like, you know, that same with us. It's like, how do you have time to do it? Well, if you just love what you do, it gets done. Right. You know? And exactly. the charity stuff, it, it just, it, it lives on. It keeps going. And that memory of that dad patting me on the back and saying, I can't believe you had that effect on us. We just found out my kid was paralyzed. I'll never forget that. You know, I know I affected them that day. Charity work goes both ways. You're helping them, but you're really getting something back too. So yeah. it's, yeah. You really do. You feel, yeah. you f- you're like the the Grinch. Your heart feels like it's yes. full when you leave. It really yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that feeling very, very well. All right. If you could offer a single piece of advice to someone looking to pursue their passion and turn it into a successful career, what would it be? Stay focused. Don't let other people tell you what you can and can't do. You know what you can do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
be honest with yourself. Yep. Um, you know, I know I can jump from here across the street. Do you know that? <laughs> Is there steps? I mean, do you have a guideline? Do you? You don't have a guideline? Figure out a guideline, but do that yourself. You don't have to tell everybody your dreams. You know, I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to have my own television show. You don't have to. When I was doing my vlog, I didn't tell everybody, I'm going to have my own TV show. I'm going to have my own TV show. Because if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. But we were happy doing the vlog. We do 400 shows a year. If it's not on video, I don't remember it. <laughs> it's funny. Right? So, I mean, it was nice. We get to see my kid grow up on video. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're gone, she can watch her life. I mean, we video every week. She can see the progression of herself growing up. It's amazing. So... Make sure you have goals, but make sure that you are doing the research to get to the next goal. But you don't have to tell everybody all of your – have somebody you can confide in that, that supports you and have a backbone. I would highly recommend that. You have somebody that's behind you, then you can tell them, but don't tell everybody. Just go out there and just show them. Yeah. It's like, like Steve Harvey says, if you want to kill your dream, tell it to a small person. Mm. 100%. 100%. All right, so now, as we have two more sauces left, we're going into our closing portion of the podcast, which is dedicated to Larry King. So Larry King had a like um, series of questions that he would ask at the end of his shows, and this one is called, If You Only Knew. Now, these are simple questions. I don't need um, whole long responses. Um, so we'll go through them, and then we'll also finish off the last two sauces right here. So the first question is, the person you would trade places with for a day. And you can answer it too. So oh. you can do a question. You go you can first. Do one answer and he'll do his answer. So somebody I trade places for a day? Yep. Just out of curiosity. Ooh. Hmm. I think I I wanna I wanna trade places with like Carrie Underwood. Just to be a singer for a night. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Your dream is singing. Oh, it would be fun. I don't. I wouldn't want to do it as a career, but just <laughs> if you're saying just to see how it goes, like for one, yeah, yeah. I think that's my answer. Okay. I think that would be fun. Golly, I don't. I don't have a good answer. I wish I had something. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I love <laughs> Arnold. I love Arnold. But would I want to trade lives with him for one day? Back when he was thirty something, yeah. Okay. But now he's older, right? I love Arnold. I love Arnold. Uh, boy, I, I don't have. Uh, what is your answer? Give me your answer. Give me. A I wouldn't. To I wouldn't trade places with anybody. See, <laughs> <laughs> see, there you go. There you go. I don't it's have an answer for one that. One night. Though. All right, I want trade places with you because you get to hang out with me all day. No, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right>. you're funny. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, what is funny, and not so funny, is the heat <laughs> of this next sauce. So this is the peri peri which brings the flavor of Portugal to your palate. The spicy kick of heat mixed with garlic, fresh lemons, and other flavorful ingredients. African bird-eyed chili as a signature mouth-watering flavor. Perfect for chicken or fish dishes. Offers a combination of sunshine, warmth, and mouth-watering flavors. Mm. Oh, it's great for you. You want you to try it? First. Nope, I'm Come good. On. I'm getting hotter, baby. I know. You go first, sir. No yeah. restrictor bleed. I know. Is that a good thing? I don't know. We have to, <laughs> we have to ask HR why some of these they, are um, not restricted. <laughs> I was a mess up at the factory. Oh, this is good. I wish you luck. <laughs> I like it. Oh, my. <laughs> See, it would be oh, my, if it was straight heat going to your mouth and you were just going to catch on fire right away. But like I said, every time you bite into this, you have like at least a, maybe like almost a 10 second delay before anything really happens. Yeah, I haven't got anything yet. It doesn't get to the oh my section weird. though. It's coming. That's what I was for. Is it coming? Should. Did you get it? Unless we need to go down on the heat scale. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, this is actually my wife's favorite sauce. This is what she puts on everything. Wow. Nice. So, moving forward, and like I said, remember, it's always flavored. So the idea is it's not supposed to be incredibly hot where you don't enjoy it anymore. The next question is, the weirdest job you've ever had? Weirdest job? And in this case, we'd say maybe weirdest gig. Oh, there you, you go. And then him. 
Well, we've gone to all the same gigs. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then answer, it might have been weird for you. Andrew has one. Oh, okay. It might have been weird for you. Do you have one? Weird gig. Weird gig. I have friends that perform at nudist colonies. I've never oh, done one of those. Oh. I've never done one of those. I'll ask you a question later um, about that one. <laughs> Oh, I have a couple friends. I, I just found out another friend just did a nudist colony recently. What is your answer? We have we have adventurous gigs. Like I'm gonna change it, not weird, that's but not, adventurous. That's not the we had to, we had to do a summer <laughs> camp. We had I to do like a her answer. It's not the question. <laughs> not we had to do a summer question. camp, and we had to put all of our equipment on a canoe and take it across the lake to do it over there because there was no other way. Everybody in camp had to ride that same canoe over. So everything had to be loaded. I can qualify taken. as weird. Yeah, I guess that was, so. That, that was that was weird. As weird. Yeah. That's unique. Yeah. That was weird. unique and different. Yeah. 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 Okay. All, All right. right. You did good on that. Hey. One. Good job. All right. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Her TV shows. Her That's TV very shows. True. <laughs> My TV shows. I like watching. Yeah. I, so he hates that I watch Sister Wives. Not that I want a sister wife. Never would I want one. But I find it very interesting how they work or don't make it work, really. So it's just, I don't know. That, I guess that's my guilty pleasure is a couple of reality TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. My guilty pleasure is playing magic, learning new magic tricks. I get away and I'm, I'm playing. And I feel guilty doing it. When I go to my magic room and I just... I go up there and just start getting creative. I'm playing, it's a guilty pleasure, but I'm also learning. Like when I got hired to work on the um, reality show, one of the one day they just showed up and said, hey, we have to make a 700 pound ice sculpture disappear. <laughs> That's funny. There is no store bought magic trick that gives you that answer. Yeah. So um, when my daughter wants to be in the show, there's like silk tricks and flower tricks that doesn't fit my style, but it fits her. When I'm hired as a consultant for somebody else, I need to know these different tricks to make it work. Like if I was hired to work for a skateboard company, uh, I would have to come up with magic tricks with skateboards. Well, there isn't no skateboard tricks out there on the market, so I have to create it. So coming up with those things and working on those things and trying to put all that stuff back there, that's my guilty pleasure. I love just being creative and just playing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I will believe you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the best compliment you ever got. Best compliment. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I think the best compliment is when people say they love it, the show, and that they love the fact that the whole family is involved. That makes my heart happy. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people say, why aren't you in Vegas? Well, I mean, how can we just found out about you? You know, they, they want to follow us. What's your website? What's your Facebook? What is what is this? What is this? And they just instantly become followers, and they start texting you yeah. and become friends with these people that saw us at a show. I think that's that's a pretty good compliment that yeah. we that we have people that come to our show, and then they start following our podcast. They start watching our television show, and they'll tweet to us or they'll ask us questions on Facebook, and they become friends over time. That's a that's a great compliment. They really enjoy the show if they are that invested. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Great answers. All right. What never fails to make you laugh? Our babysitter. That's very true. <laughs> that is very true. She can come up with some pretty funny stuff. So, and not on purpose. That's what makes it even funnier. That's funny. Marketing. Talking about commercials, right? Yeah. She just, she just comes up and she says, uh, I, I remember that one song from that commercial. What was it? What was it? Uh Fruit roll up. <laughs> we're like, no, that's not right. Dude, it's re cola. <laughs> <laughs> you were totally right. But she said it with confidence and she just sung it to the top of her lungs. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. the kind of stuff she comes up with. Yeah. 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 That's funny. So when she watches this, yeah. you make them yeah. laugh the hardest. Yeah. 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 Fruit roll up. <laughs> the worst piece of advice you ever got. Worst piece of advice. Uh, go to college. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I get, a, get a real job. Yeah. 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 I didn't want to go to college, but I did because that's what you're supposed to do, right? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done absolutely zero with it. 
So <laughs> yeah, she graduated and said, "Can I come work for you?" I'm right. like, "Yeah, I'll put yeah, you to work in the office." Yeah. Yeah. And then it's my girlfriend, so I'm taking her to the shows with me, and then slowly just got her in the show, and she books the shows for me. She's my manager, she's my agent, she takes care of me, she books the shows, she does everything. Yeah. So not she, saying that I didn't have some fun at college, but I didn't need to go to college because that's not. That's not where my life went. It didn't help you with your career. Right. No, it didn't. And I don't think that's, you know, I don't think that's everybody's path either. Yeah. So, whereas it used to be, you know, every you're told you graduate high school, go to college. Not necessary. And yeah, she has I, a religion degree. So, right. yeah. yeah. Well, and also too, a lot of times you go to college and come out and, you know, you're in debt. So now you're already in debt. Now you're trying to get, you know, depending on what you're doing, either like a residency or, you know, like an internship or whatever. So you have no money coming in. You know what I mean? I think, you know, okay. So I think that their college is right for like the right people. Like if I ever had a brain surgery, I really hope that guy went to college. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. If I had my heart transplant, really hope he went to college. Right. The guy that takes the, the trash from my house, not so worried about it when he goes to college. The right. guy that serves me the coffee at the coffee store, not worried about it. You know what I mean? Right. And that's the thing. You know, it's, there's a time and a place. But I think now in today's world, it's more about the ability to be creative is what will really get you success. You mm -hmm. know, and thinking outside the box and adding value. When you can change somebody's life like you guys do, whether it's spiritually, mentally, physically, that is the ultimate way to become rich is um, helping other people. And they can be in a wide range, you know. And that, like, if you look at some of the top people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, they're all finding ways to change the world, make it the world a better place, easier place, you know, more functional. So um, when you have things like that, I think it plays a big role. And that's something I don't think that college is going to teach you. This is something that really comes within, you know, like that calling, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So 100%. Yeah. 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 So, speaking of calling, we need to call this Signal One because this is our last sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Honey here under the table, my beautiful service dog who is very impatient. You want another piece of chicken? She's my new best friend. <laughs> She's everybody's best friend. She's so sweet. There you go. She Aww. is. She is a sweetheart. And if you want a sweetheart, Stavron County Animal Shelter has tons of dogs. We do free videos for them every week to oh, help nice. with the dogs getting adopted. Um, and I'll show you, we make little dog stories. So what we do is we take the bio of the animal and then we use an AI voice, male or female, depending on the animal. And it's like the animal is telling you about themselves. So they're introducing Aww. you and oh, then they so have cute. all like the B-roll of the dogs running around outside. So instead of just like a picture, now you get to learn a bit, a little bit about the personality and it yeah. gives like a really great persona because now you can see the dog, oh wow, you know, it loves being pet, it loves running around, you know. Yeah. So That's awesome. That it's really, really cool. Neat. Yeah, I like that. You're just gonna love, you're just gonna love. <laughs> So signal one, number five on the heat scale, a collaboration between Always Flavored and Maltese Brewing Company. The blends extreme hot pepper beer with Carolina Reapers, smoked peppers, mango habanero flakes packed with serious heat with a balanced sweet fruitiness that takes the world's famous hot pepper beer to the next level. A sauce that brings heat to the challenge, your, or heat to challenge your taste buds. All the way down. Come on. All the way down. There we go. So, let's dive in. After you, sir. All right. I'll watch how much you put on. I'm going to put a lot on it. I got to get views, you know? But now I have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? And that's why See, look, I look, laminate look. all my sheets because... There you go. <sighs> got Number five. Here we go. Now the heat does turn on a little bit faster on this one. This is not really like a delay, but it is delicious. And it's something that you can still handle. It is hot, but it's not like one of these like um, taco chips where you have to like sign a waiver and it says like, yeah, you're gonna be messed up for the next couple of days. Oh gosh. We saw no waivers today. <laughs> 
So you can obviously taste the heat. It is there. Are the hiccups coming? I don't have hiccups yet. That's my thing. I get the hiccups if it's really, really, really spicy. No. No. Wow. Was it? Did something else actually kick out my? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because you built up. Yeah. To it. Maybe yeah. That's yeah, what right. it is. Maybe we should start with hot and wow. <laughs> go down next wow. time. Right, yeah. But that is the value, once again, of always flavored. You know, it's always flavored. So, last question of our podcast. Something you wish you were better at. Something I wish I was better at. Hmm. Gardening, because that can make our front yard look pretty with flowers but i can't keep anything alive <laughs> you need to look at his other podcast right, probably. that'll yeah, help that'll yeah, help yeah. check out madmanplant.com yeah, there you go there you go um uh, learning the equipment for a podcast ah. i can't never get her levels right in our podcast so i will help you out with that there you go <laughs> i want to be better at that that's something that's been killing me uh we're four seasons in and I'm always putting the microphone closer to her, messing with her levels. Yeah. Yeah. It's a simple process. Just a couple little inputs and you'll be fine. Uh, well, I mean, there's so much to learn with audio. I got magic. I'm focused on so much on magic. It's hard to do that too. But well, I, that's why we have collaborations. That's I can right. ask you questions. Yeah. yeah. You've been doing magic for how long now? Since I was seven years old. See? And I've been doing this for 14 years. We're in good shape. There you there go. You yeah. There you go. So as we wrap this up, how can people obviously find you? And, you know, what should they expect going forward? Going forward, more of the same. Um, I don't think we have anything major announcement-wise planned. No. Coming up no. soon. No movies. Like, no movies, no. anything like that. Nobody's going to play you yet. in a movie. Not <laughs> yet. Season four of our television shows in syndication across the country. It's Wes Isley's Magic Life. Um, if you have Roku or, or what is the other, Amazon Fire, mm -hmm. it's on a couple different channels. You can find links to that on our website, wesisley.com. Um, that's W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I.com. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, you name a uh, social media platform, I'm on it. So under uh, Wes, uh, Wes underscore. underscore Isley on Instagram. Yeah. See, that's why she is here. <laughs> well, it's starting to burn. My tongue's starting yeah. to burn. <laughs> and the heat does come on slow. It is really slow. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yep. And you still haven't touched your water yet. No, it's good. <laughs> well, this is perfect. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. We're going to have plenty more. Thank you guys so much for being on the podcast and speaking with me and having fun. Thank you for the magic tricks. This was awesome. Dude, I had a blast. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Thanks yeah, for having that's us. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are number four on the podcast. Yeah, number four on our Good Luck Stuff podcast. So I really appreciate it. And if you guys want to tune in more, make sure you go to goodluckstuff.com, all of our social media, and we'll see you guys next time.